We're all familiar with the most played Christmas song from last year. It's been echoing around our houses, pubs and nightclubs for over 30 years. Do they know it's Christmas was written by Bob Geldof and Midge Yeah as a reaction to the mid 80s famine in Ethiopia. Recorded by Band Aid, the single was released in December 1984 and stayed at the number one slot for several weeks. It sold a million copies in its first week alone and was the biggest selling single of all time until Elton John blew us out with his windy candle. Whilst Western governments were sitting on their asses deciding whether to help or not, within a year of its release, Band Aid had raised £8 million for the Ethiopian cause. What's less known is Soft Aid. Now, Soft Aid was the video game industry's reaction to the crisis, instigated and released by Quicksilver's Rod Cousins in late 1985. Its aim was to support the Ethiopian cause from a software point of view. Released on tape for both the ZX Spectrum and Commodore 64, the tape was a compilation of games for each computer, with the Band Aid single also recorded onto Side 1. This was probably the first time that software had been used to support a charity, and the artwork by video game cover artist David Rowe featured a rather poignant image of a stark desert blue sky and humblingly thin character sitting to the right. It was also one of the first compilations made up of previously released games, other than Telstar's Select One. Various software houses donated games for the compilation, including Quicksilver themselves with Ant Attack for the Speccy and Fred for the Commodore 64. There were also some cross-platform games including Elite's Jet Set Willy Beater, Cockatoni Wilf and US Gold's platformer Gilligan's Gold. Costs were kept to a minimum for the package and software houses even began queuing up to get their games on the single tape, which led to further compilations down the road, such as Off The Hook. Soft Aid sold for a very reasonable £4.99, equating to only about 50p per game, and this led to the tape becoming a bestseller almost instantly. It stayed at the top of the software charts for four months and continued to appear in top 10 charts well into 1986, leading to raised funds of over £350,000. Not bad for an emerging industry. The compilations differed for each format, with the Specky version arguably the best, but then there were many more games available for Sinclair's workhorse in the UK at this time. Let's take a look at the games. For the Commodore 64, we have Beam Rider, a budget shoot 'em up from 1984, China Miner, a ridiculously hard platformer, Falcon Patrol, which is a Defender clone with jet fighters, Flak, an early shoot 'em up with good graphics and effects. Fred, which is basically Indiana Jones with a more common name and no license. Gilligan's Gold, a collecting game which was pretty darn hard. Gumshoe, a clone of possibly my favourite 80s game, Elevator Action. Gyropod was a variation on the space shoot 'em up formula. Cockatoni Wilf was Jet Set Willy with wings. And Star Trader, which was heavily based on Elite. Sinclair Spectrum owners could get their hands on 3D Tank Duel, uh, Real Time Games made its name with this Battlezone clone, Ant Attack, which was Sandy White's famous game featuring massive deadly ants, and one of the first isometric games. Gilligan's Gold was actually a C64 port and pretty similar. Horace Goes Skiing featured one of my favourite video game characters, Hungry Horace. Jack and the Beanstalk, Trial and Error, and more error than trial if I'm honest. Cockatoni Wilf, Jet Set Willy with Wings. The Pyramid, made by Fantasy, was simple gunning fun. Sorcery was action, adventure and fast pace. Spellbound was a Qbert clone. And Starbike, which was similar to Lunar Jetman and a pretty good game. The compilation idea itself went on to start a new niche in the software industry of repackaging old games into bargain collections, and the charity format itself would later be the idea behind compilations such as Kids Play and even the current Humble Bundle. If you remember any of these games, drop a comment below and let's reminisce about charity and gaming like it was 1985. Thank you for watching this semi-festive video about Soft Aid. I do a number of videos each week, so please feel free to click one below, subscribe or even contribute to my Patreon channel. In any case, thank you very much for watching and good night.